Hi, soon to be call center agent. Uh, this is Naomi C once again, and this is part two of our top five out of the box questions and answers plus tips. So I created this video to help you ace your call center interview. And if you haven't watched part one of this video, I will link it on the description box down below or at the icons that you will see or you can see at the topmost right corner of your screen. So without further ado, let's begin. Anyway, if you want more upcoming uploads about call center hiring tips and techniques, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button next to it so you won't miss anything. If you did already, thank you so much. Alright, so before I start, I'll give you some disclaimer. I made this video presentation this way because I'd like you to have the opportunity to take note of all the details I'll be sharing. You may take a screenshot of it or you may get an idea on the answers I'll be providing because that is the main purpose of this video. Also, note that the questions I used in here came from my research and these are all personal answers of mine. Thank you. Alright, so let's begin with number one. How would you hide a dead body? So, this is a kind of scary question, but let me explain to you in detail what really is all about. What really is the question all about, okay? So... Yeah, this is an indirect metaphor type of question. It tests how quick is your thinking capability when faced with critical or high pressure environment. Alright, so here is my answer to that question or you can answer it this way. I certainly won't hide a dead body my entire life because I strongly believe that killing is a mortal sin punishable by God and human beings. I can see here two scenarios. I saw a dead body but I am not the one who actually committed the crime. Or the number two is I myself did the crime and don't want anyone else to know about it. So if I did scenario number two, then I won't hide the dead body. I will surrender myself to the police authority and let them bury the dead body. Because I believe that no matter how good you are at hiding something, it will always, always be revealed. Perhaps not now or 10 years from now, but it sure will. So you really have to face the consequences of your actions and be responsible for it okay so that is how you can answer this uh tricky question okay next question what did you have for breakfast so here are my tips when answering this question you have to add flavor to your answer don't answer plainly or avoid boring answers. So this is asked to determine your lifestyle and if you're a cultural fit. Okay? So this is my answer to that question or you can answer that question this way. So I had a flavorful breakfast early this morning. I ate garlic fried rice paired with juicy hot dogs and sunny side up eggs for my drink i had my not so hot chocolate flavored milk i also ate tasty red apples as an appetizer it was a heavy yet healthy breakfast so as you can see it's not a boring answer i describe it the best i can so you can probably answer it this way okay so next number three is if you could be any comedian who would you be so you have the option to choose who would it be it's it, it can be your favorite comedian okay so here are my tips when answering this question oh sorry i didn't provide any tips but yeah you can answer it this way if i will be a comedian I'd choose being Mr. Bean portrayed by Mr. Rowan Atkinson because he is the type of comedian who does the comedy in a simple 
fun and not in an exaggerated way. He can make you laugh by simply doing something simple without giving much effort. Like imagine joking without actually saying or talking. So that is pretty awesome, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, that is how you can answer that question. Next question is question number four. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so I put the answer way ahead of the tip. So supposedly it's going to be tips first before the answer. So pardon me about that. Yes, my tips for that would be relate your answer to a comedian whom you admired and make sure to highlight his or her best quality. So you can go back to my answer to this question and um, just apply the tips that I gave you in this presentation. Okay, so pardon me about that. Alright, so let's move along to number four. Question number four is, if you were shrunk to the size of the pencil and dropped in a blender, how would you get out? <laughs> so this is kind of tricky question as well and let's see what would be my tips when answering this question. Alright, so this tests your ability to think and cope up under extreme pressure. So what you can do here is you may tell personal life experience of yours that you overcame in the past. Now, it can be related to your job as well if you wanted to. So my answer to this question is here. Here it is. Or you can answer it this way. So I can relate that question to what happened to me when I was still in college, struggling to get a degree in engineering because I'm only an average person not good in math, science, or any other subject that requires strong analytical skills. That's the time when I can compare myself to a tiny pencil dropped in a blender. For me, at that time, I am faced with gigantic hindrances hindrances and that I can never get out of it or graduate from college. However, with the help of help guidance and assistance of those people with kind hearts i was able to do so i made it to the stage and finally graduated from college and so it's like me a tiny pencil being able to get out of that blender for good okay so as i've mentioned a while ago you can definitely give an example based on your uh, job experience if you have any okay next or actually, we're up to our last, last question. So, the, the last question would be, why do you want to work here? So, why do you want to work here? This is kind of a tricky or not so tricky question. Or we can say it's just a simple question, but uh, let's take a look at my tips for you when answering this question. So yeah, this might seem a typical interview question. However, if you aren't prepared or you didn't anticipate that this question will be asked, you might fall in a trap. So you have to do research about the company. You also have to highlight its best qualities and achievements. Okay, so uh, this is a pro tip for you. When you're going for an interview, you have to do research of the company first before actually coming in an interview because they will definitely ask you a question related to their company and if you can't give them any answer, then that might be the cause for you to not be chosen as one of their best candidates possible for the position they have available in the office okay so here is my answer to that question or you can answer this question uh, this way so of all companies i've chosen yours to apply because based on my research your highly stemmed company is the best when it comes to its people. You are a caring employer and you prioritize your people along with keeping your business in its good state. Apart from that, I have seen that your company also received outstanding awards and recognition for its excellence in delivering services to its people. That for me 
is what makes the best employer. So I'm sorry I have typographically type <laughs> mistype. I'm sorry. It it should it should be is. Alright, so I'm sorry about that. Alright, so basically that's it. Those are the five out of the box questions and answers plus tips and make sure to stay tuned because I will be posting part three and the last part of this video. Okay, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you find this video helpful, kindly smash the like button, subscribe to my channel, and yeah, best luck on your job hunting. Hope you're safe. Naomi see. Bye!